What's going on, guys? It's Mike here with Option Snipers, and welcome to the Option Snipers Trading Academy. I'm one of the admins here, and I'm going to be teaching you guys today the uh, basics of the stock market and the intro to stock options. Um, a lot of people, they like to, to make stock options seem something that's super difficult, and it's really not. Listen, if you understand the basics, you understand why you're trading options, you understand the anatomy of an option, um, and what you need to be looking for getting into options trading, I promise you it's something that you can definitely take advantage of. I literally, I've taught my 10 year old son how to trade options. Um, he's doing very well doing so as well. Of course, you know, what does that mean for you? That just means that if you take the time and you listen to what is being taught, you know, by myself and through the other admins in this course, um, I promise you that this is something that's going to change your life. So go ahead and sit back, grab a pen, grab a notepad. You know, don't be shy, press the pause button if you need to write something down. Um, and like take the most out of this thing and, and really grab it by the horns and, and, and let's go. So what we're going to be talking about today, um, again, is the intro to stock market. It's going to be the intro to stock options. Like I said, options made easy. Um, so I'm going to be teaching you guys literally the basics of the market, um, about pre-market, aftermarket hours. We're going to talk about different sectors of the market. We're going to talk about, you know, the, like I said, the anatomy of an option, um, intro to options, um, all the key terms and definitions you need to know from getting started. And, and I think this is really going to uh, send you off on the right foot. If you... Um, we're looking to, to learn the basics. A lot of people, you know, they get on YouTube and they look at videos and they're already looking at different strategies and, and how to use certain indicators on this other nonsense. Well, you need to understand the basics of options trading first. If you don't even understand what strike price or the contracts you're looking at um, before you're looking at these other strategies, it's not going to help you. So cut that other nonsense off and let's, let's talk about the basics first and um, to get you started on the right foot, okay? So I always start my things off with a pop quiz. So I have a pop quiz. This one says, what is the historical average rate of return in the stock market versus the annual rate of return in a standard savings account? Is it A, 15% and 8%? Is it B, 9% and 150%? Is it C, 7% and 0.08%? Or is it D, 10% and 4%? Think about that one. All right. For my A students, you I know you got this right. It's C, right? So the United States stock market has a historical rate of average on return of 7% on your investment, which is over 80 times the average savings account. Yes, you heard that correct. So if you have your money sitting that you're not using at all, you know, this is your savings account um, and your bank account. If you have that sitting there, you literally are missing out on 80 times what you could be making for just having your money sitting in the stock market. Yep. And I'm, you know, I'm not talking about anything trading wise or anything crazy investments. Anything. Literally, just sitting in your market in a, in a, uh, either a very good ETF or you know, just one of the major index funds. You could literally be making seven percent of your money every single year, not even have to think about it. So definitely, I want you to to just grasp that and think about this is why you need to understand the market. This is why you really need to invest in your education because you've been missing out on. 80 times what you've been saving uh, year after year from your money just sitting there. So so when we talk about the market, man, you know, we're actually talking about the United States Stock Exchange. You know, we, uh, there are a lot of markets out here. We got crypto markets, got Forex. We got, you know, different commodities that people trade. However, when I'm telling you, um, we're talking about the market here, it's the U.S. Stock Exchange. And, you know, I could sit here and read the definition of what the stock market is. You could look it up online, too, but then that would be boring and this wouldn't be stocks made easy. Right. So I'm going to break it down and, and, and explain to you how I explain to my kids, how I explain to anybody that knows nothing about the market, the stock market. Think about it like a farmer's market. Right. So, as you know, in a farmer's market or a grocery store, where, whichever one you have close to your house, you know, they have produce and, and different items that get brought to the farmer's market by different farmers. Those farmers, they take their produce, they divide them up. They sell them to people at the market. Then they take the profits that they make from their produce back to their farms. They, you know, are able to buy more seeds, able to buy more tractors. They're able to, you know, hire more employees. And that helps grow their farm. Well, that's the same thing the stock market is for, right? So, you know, big businesses like Nike, Apple, Tesla, Google, Netflix, um, you know, NVIDIA, anybody you can think of, all they're doing is they're bringing their companies to the public exchange where, where, where you can buy shares there. And they split them up. Selling to people like you and I, you know, the demand of these things go up and that increases the price. And once the price increases, they take that money 
and they take it back to their, you know, their farms, which is their business. They hire more employees. They cut checks for people. They do different things to, to grow their companies. And that's all this thing is. You know what I mean? So don't don't overcomplicate it like, oh, my God, you have to be a mathematician to jump in. This. No, you do not. You need to understand basic economics and basic, you know, markets, right? You bring something to the market, you split it up and you sell it, and you take your profits and you make your business better. So a lot of people already know, you know, the stock market is open from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But some of you may not know that you can actually get into the stock market um, early depending on what platform you're trading on. And, you know, you can get in as early as 4 a.m. on some platforms. Um, some others, you know, it takes about 7 a.m. to get on. But anyway, they have pre-market hours, right? So you can get on from 4 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. and trade your shares. Um, not a lot of people can, I don't believe you can trade options on any other platform other than TD Ameritrade around 7 a.m., which is just the uh, S&P 500, um, but conversation for another day. However, you can trade shares early in the morning on pre-market. If you have to work, you say, Mike, well, um, I love to get into the stock market but I'm and, and trade, but um, I work, you know, at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. Well, guess what? No excuse. You can get up bright and early and you can look at the pre-market moves. Um, you can set up, you know, different trades because you already can understand, you know, what's going on for the day looking at the pre-market, right? We also have aftermarket. So aftermarket is from 4 p.m to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's basically the same thing the other way around. So the market still moves after 4 p.m., you know what I mean? A lot of big moves happen after 4 p.m., especially when you start looking at earnings reports and different things like that. Um, so definitely want you to understand that there is, you know, um, plenty of time for you to be, you know, in the market, to be trading and investing. Um, you just have to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, and, you know, and take advantage of it. So, you know, just like going back to my example of the of the farmer's market, the stock market has, you know, different sections, right? In a farmer's market or a grocery store, there's different sections within in those markets, right? So when you're thinking about the stock market, you got to you got to think about it just like that. So the way the market is divided up is divided up into 11 sectors, right? So we have the energy, materials, industrial, financials, utilities, you name it, right? Um, but inside of those sectors, they have sub industries, right? So just like if you go to the the dairy aisle, for example, you know it's not just milk there. However, there's cheese, there's sour cream, there's all different types of dairy products. Um, the stock market is the same way. So you have the you know a financial sector. It's not just one big bank. It's every bank that you can imagine that's under the sun is going to be over in that financial sector. Um, and companies that fall into the same category. You know what I mean? So. Um, like I said, if you if you want to just understand the market and you don't want to you know make it super complex, I love to think about it like a grocery store. Uh, some people might say it's because I like to eat, but hey, whatever, man. Whatever you got to do to to understand this thing, do that. But the, the the stock market is like a grocery store. You have different sections that make up the the, the grocery store, and then you have different subsections of those sections that make those sections. <laughs> And that is just like the market is. So you have the stock market, you break it down to sectors, and then you break it down to industries. So just like I was telling you about these industries, the cool thing about them is they, a lot of them have ETFs. And we're going to go into what ETFs are in a second. But ETFs are one of the easiest things that you can invest in um, when you don't have a lot of time to be trading every day. Um, you don't have a lot of time to manage different stocks, you know, stock after stock after stock after stock. ETFs. I'm um, going to be something when I teach you this, you're going to be like, wow, man, if you didn't know anything about it, you're going to love it because this is going to allow you to um, invest, you know, in yourself and invest long term without you having to do a whole lot of data search and 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 nonsense. So uh, but I, like I said, again, going back to what we're talking about now, I just want you to think about, you know, how this, the grocery store is broken down and break the stock market down just like that. So the, the top three indexes or indices, as some people call them of the stock market, um, and I call it the big three, are going to be the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. Um, these are, are really what everybody that's invested in the stock market is looking into every single day. Um, these things, uh, of course, have stocks inside of them that really make, make everything move. The S&P 500, as everybody knows, is the top 500 companies of America. So all the big dogs in America are in this, in this um, uh, index. And you know, you can just because you were you were there yesterday don't mean you're gonna be there tomorrow either though, right? So just like any other team or or anything in life, if you don't you know meet the criteria to stay in, in the game, you get you get put out. So you know, oh, as we saw last year with Macy's for example, Macy's was in the S P five hundred for a long time, but guess what? They fell off, right? And when they fell off and their market cap you know was reduced, 
um, they got kicked out, right? And Tesla is actually one of the newer companies that is inside the SP 500. And as you know, Tesla year after year, quarter after quarter, has been increasing their financial, has been increasing their profits, and that's why they are now in SP 500. Um, the Dow Jones is actually the top 30 companies in the stock market. Um, same concept here, you can be in, you can be out. As long as you are a top company, you have a large market cap, um, and you are, are considered, uh, like I say, big dog, you are in that, in that category. Um, but the NASDAQ, for example, the NASDAQ is actually one of my favorite indexes. And the reason why is, you know, it, it's, the, it, it's the biotechs and the, the technology sector. Um, it has all of your big giants in there. Everything that I believe is, is the future of the stock market is inside the NASDAQ. And if you invest in these top three that I'm talking about here, um, long term, that's where you're going to get that seven to seven and a half, eight percent return on your money year after year without even having to think about it. Sometimes it's even more than that. But you know, it's a, almost a guaranteed seven or eight percent um, with your money sitting in these three. So, just think about that. Write that down if you need to. Um, you can do a little bit more research and find out exactly what I'm talking about. But this is the the basics of the market. If you're looking to invest and you're looking to say, okay, I want to you know get ready to get in the market. I, I want to get my feet wet. The way to get your feet wet is to look at these three. So now we're going to go with some key term and definitions. Um, because obviously with any lesson that you're learning in life or any new um, thing that you're putting into your education, there's always definitions and key terms that are very important to understand what's going on. So some of the key terms and definitions are very basic. You know, so a lot of people get the difference between stocks and shares confused, right? So the stock is the company. The stock is Apple. You have shares of Apple, right? So, so you know, when you're in a conversation with your friends and, and you want to sound intelligent, don't uh, you know, I got, I got, I got stock, uh, or I mean, I have shares. It, no, no, you have, you own Apple stock, and you have shares, or you have X amount of shares of Apple stock, right? Um, and let's also talk about a ticker symbol. So a ticker symbol um, is what's used to describe or or identify a stock in the stock market. Um, so for example, AAPL is Apple. Um, you know, you have TSLA, which is Tesla, um, Amazon. Everybody has a different one, but don't think that just because the stock is spelled a certain way that their ticker's guaranteed to be that way. Um, sometimes it'll throw you off because they're a little different. But when you're watching TV, you're watching C uh, CNBC or or uh, any of, of your favorite stock network shows, they'll probably just have the ticker symbols, you know, sliding across the bottom of the screen, or they, they may even have them up. And you're like, man, what is that? Well, that is the ticker. That is how you describe a stock. So those are basic definitions in, 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 of the stock market. So um, some basic moving indicators or some things that we like to use on a daily basis are going to be your RSI, which is Relative Strength Index, the Moving Average Convergence Divergence, also known as the MACD. You're probably like, what the heck, Mike? You said this was made easy. Well, listen, that's probably going to be the last time you hear anybody ever say the Moving Average Convergence Divergence for one main reason, because it sounds crazy. But no, nobody, you don't have to say it that way. It's the MACD is what it is. That's what everybody calls it. Um, and then we're also going to talk about um, exponential moving averages. Um, the reason why we talk about EMAs um, is because, you know, especially with, with trading options and, and, you know, trading, EMAs are going to give you that price action, uh, you know, right away that's moving. It's a, it's a quicker moving average than your standard moving averages. So um, RSI, the MACD, and EMAs are what we use on a daily basis to help us uh, determine, you know, different shares, I mean, different stocks that we're going to get into. See, I made the mistake right there. Different stocks that we're going to get into. Um, and different options that we may potentially buy based upon what these indicators um, and these moving averages are telling us. All right, so this is a uh, screenshot that I took uh, from Webull, and it's just to, to go over um, RSI and MACD for you, uh, and I have my EMAs on there as well, but it's a few of them, so I don't want to even confuse you guys because, uh, again, wouldn't be made easy. So basically... At the bottom, you'll see my screen where it says overbought and oversold. That's going to be your RSI uh, chart when you're looking at something like this on Webull, right? So if you move over to the right-hand side, and I believe you can follow my cursor here, you'll see the number 70 and the number 30. So the number 70 is letting you know that, you know, this stock at that time, depending on what time frame you're looking at, it's overbought, right? And if you look underneath the 70 and you see 30, you'll know that it's oversold. So what that means to you is when a stock is showing you on the time frame that you're looking at that is at 70 or above 70, it's an indication that the stock could go in a different direction, which is going to be down, right? So um, obviously, it's not something you might want to invest in at the time because everybody has already bought it 
is getting ready to probably have a sell-off, you should probably be a little hesitant on getting in, or you should be buying puts maybe, right? So the the number 70 is an indication that the stock is being overbought and there's a potential to have a, a downtrend coming up. And when you see it at 30 or below 30, it's being oversold. And it's like, hey, guys, you know, <laughs> come buy me, man. You know, and, and the stock, you know, has a good opportunity to go up from there. Um, if you move down to the MACD, the MACD does the same thing. And the way I like to explain it is when the blue line crosses beneath the gold line, that's an indication that a downtrend is coming. And when the blue line crosses above the gold line, that's an indication that there's a, a potential uptrend, right? So none of these indicators absolutely mean anything by themselves, right? So don't sit there and say, well, Mike said, no, not by himself, they mean anything. However, when you use them in conjunction with one or the other, normally you have a better opportunity to make a, a positive decision on what you're going to do in the market. Um, so when you're looking at this and you, you want to know some easy indicators to use to help you look to invest or look to trade, RSI, which is the Relative Strength Index, is a very easy indicator to use, along with MACD, um, and they can help you make decisions on what you should be getting in or be getting out of. So we're also going to talk about Fibonacci retracement, or FIBS as a lot of people call them. Um, basically, FIBS also do the same thing. So FIBS will give you um, different support and resistance lines, and they'll draw them automatically for you if you use it for correctly. And basically what a Fibonacci replacement level does is it lets you know where the, the stock could potentially go to uh, from its highs, right? So if you um, go on and, 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 and continue inside of our course, we actually go over exactly how to use FIBS, exactly what they're meant for. Um, but basically just to throw that out there, because I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Fibonacci retracement before, all it is is giving you an indication of where your uh, next support line could be. Okay. So we got some more key terms and definitions that I want to go over. Um, so uh, when you're when you're trading with us live, um, as you guys know, we trade live for our community. Um, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and even Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, when, you know, one of the admins are available. However, but when you're on there live with us, you're in there you know, chatting with the community, you may hear some of these key terms and definitions, and I want you to understand what we're talking about so you're not lost, right? So uh, bearish obviously means that the stock market is, is you know, in a downtrend or going down that day, or the stock itself that we're talking about has a downward trajectory. Um, bullish is the complete opposite of that. So bullish is, you know, when we believe the financial market or the stock that we're looking at is an upward trajectory, right? Um, we also have our support lines. Support is letting you know where the, the floor may be for the stock, where it's going. And then we also have our resistance lines, which lets you know where the ceiling may be for the stock that we're looking at. Um, TP stands for take profit. And then SL is our stop loss. So take profit is obviously what it sounds like. You're taking profit um, from whatever you're trading at the time. And a stop loss is the same thing. You're cutting whatever you may be trading at the time to cut your losses and get out of that position. Um, a few more key terms and definitions that we have, you know, we have ATH, uh, which is all time high. So that's the highest that that ticker or that stock has, has ever been. Um, we have FOMO, which is fear of missing out. So that's normally, that'll happen when you got somebody texting you, Oh my God, Tesla's, you know, going to the moon. You should get in now. Da da da. No, probably shouldn't. Uh, one of my favorite uh, sayings is, you know, I forgot. I don't know if it was Warren Buffett or, or another major investor that says it, but you know, they say buy the rumor, sell the news. And what that basically means is when everybody is screaming about a stock or everybody's telling you to get into Dogecoin and all the other nonsense, it's probably too late, right? Because the whole world knows about it. You got certain rappers that get online and post on Twitter that you should get into doge and things like that and you saw what happened right so the same thing happens with the stock market and with options right when when somebody's telling you they've made you know fifteen thousand dollars uh trading today and you should get into it you probably shouldn't because it's probably done for today so don't let anybody fomo you into something which means you know you have the fear of missing out on gains and you jump into it and you get burned so um you'll hear us talk about that a lot don't fomo 
That's all that means. Um, a gap fill, a gap fill, you'll see a lot of gap fills um, in pre-market and aftermarket, or you'll see a lot of gaps be created, I should say, in pre-market and aftermarket. And they normally are filled during the next trading day or the next couple of days. So a gap is literally just a space on the chart that there was no price action um, or there were no things traded, I should say. And that's normally a space that's going to be filled either up or down um, over the next couple of days on that stock. Earnings reports or ERs, as you may see them, um, a company, they, they all file quarterly earnings reports to let you know how the company has been doing over the last quarter. And earnings is, is a very interesting season sometimes because when you go into earnings seasons, especially when you're trading with profits, when you're playing with house money, you can make a lot of money on earnings. Um, I do not suggest that anybody that is new to trading trade earnings um, with options and you don't know what you're doing because these things can go completely left if you have no idea what's going on. So we're going to talk about that a little bit further in the course, um, how to properly trade earnings, how to properly look at an earnings report. Um, but you can make a lot of money doing earnings, but you can also lose a lot if you have no idea what's going on. So definitely a lot of people that I've seen in the past don't even teach their communities about the right way to trade earnings. They just talk about the money you can make. Well, they don't tell you the negative side of it either. Um, the negative side of earnings is if, if companies don't meet, you know, certain numbers, um, which is the, the market maker numbers, for example, they can literally die the next day and be, you know, 80, 90 percent down if you're trading a weekly. So definitely um, be careful when you're trading earnings, but it is something that is very lucrative once you understand how to do it and you're playing with house money. Um, buying power, buying power is the funds that are available in your account, um, obviously. The high of the day is the highest price that stock has been that day. The low of the day is the low of the day, obviously. And end of day is 4 p.m. is what we call it. Even though there are aftermarket hours, uh, when somebody's telling you that they're going to do something, you know, prior to end of day, they're talking about 4 p.m. So, so why do we trade options, right? And um, a lot of people are like, Mike, you know, options are risky. It's the gambling of the stock market, yada, yada, yada. Well... Um, options are traded because it allows somebody to play the big money game with little capital getting started, right? You don't need a $50,000 account to be able to trade options. You don't even need a $20,000 account to be able to trade options. A good account to start with trading options, you can start as, with as little as $1,000 if you are um, managing your account the right way. You know, you don't need a, a whole large crazy account to get in and actually make money. Um, however, you just need to understand what you are doing. If you don't understand what you're going to do, I don't care whether you have a million dollars or whether you have 500, you're going to lose your money, right? Um, so that is the, the 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 risky part of options. However, you know, in life, as you guys already know, there is no investment that you can make for yourself that you don't have to take some type of risk. So, you, you know, to be completely honest with you, options, they have risk involved. But when you understand these risks and you line those up with the research and the due diligence that you've done, that's how you can manage your risk and take them in the proper way. But options is something that can literally change, you know, your life and change what's going on if you do it the right way. There are some people that I know that are in our community now that went from making no money every day with their own strategies, what they were doing, to making three, four, five, and, you know, sometimes even $1,000 a day because they're following simple strategies. And that's what options can do for you. Do you normally, to make a lot of money with trading shares, you have to invest a lot of money, right? And not a lot of people have large accounts. So... If you want to know why we trade options, why, you know, what are options for, it is the, the best way to explain it is to allow you to, you know, to play the, the big money game or the big guys game with a smaller account, you know, and then you can have that large account. Um, the goal of trading options should be one of two things, in my opinion. You should be, you should, your goal should be to take the money that you're making from options to invest it long term, to keep that growth going, because everybody loves to talk about generational wealth and all this other stuff. However, if you don't have any stocks that you can pass down to your children, that is not generational wealth. You know what I mean? Buying a stock and selling it back the next day is that's not generational wealth. Generational wealth, you take something, you buy, you hold it, and you pass it down, right? So you should be trading for generational wealth. Um, and what I mean by that is the money that you're making, you're taking and investing long term. Or you should be trading for a serious goal in mind. So a goal could be, you know, to replace income that you have currently with a, a part-time job or even your main job at some point. Um, you're looking to get into an investment. You want to buy, you know, real estate. You want to get into trucking. You want to get into ATMs. You want to get into Airbnbs. So you have a goal in mind. Your goal with trading options should never just be to make money. Because if that is your goal, 
you are going to lose. I can promise you that. Because what's going to happen is you're going to get in, even with people like myself in the option snipers, you're going to get in with us and we're going to show you how to make a lot of money and you're going to get stuck on that number that you, oh, I can make so much money and you're going to risk too much and you're going to get burned. So what I'm telling you is if you don't have a goal in mind while you're trading this thing, this thing is a, is a Ferrari, okay? Driving it the right way can be very fun. You can drive it fast sometimes on a straightaway. But if you don't understand the power that you're going to have once you learn how to trade with us, you're going to crash your car. So make sure that you come in with the right mindset, that you come in with the, the mindset to do, like I said, one of two things. And if you have that, there should be no issues. I promise you have a great time. But if you come in and you're like, man, I just want to make as much money as I can. I'm going to just run up the bag, whatever I got to do. That is when you're going to get burned because what's going to happen one day is you're going to be looking at your account like, wow, I just made all this money. Let me take a shot for the – I'm going to hit a home run. No, that's not how you play, right? The way we play this is just like playing baseball. We hit singles every day, get on base, load the bases, and once we're up, right, now we can swing at every pitch. And what I mean by swing at every pitch is obviously not trade every option out there or trade every stock. What I mean by swing at every pitch is now we can swing and try to hit a home run. But we're hitting home runs with, with house money, right? Or we got lucky and hit a home run when we weren't even looking to hit one because we were looking to hit singles. But the goal is that, you know, your goal when you get started is to, to, to make singles every day. And what I mean by that is you, you, you should be looking to make somewhere between $200 and $250 a day. If you can do that, you'll build your account up over time. As you build your account up over time, there'll be those days when you can hit home runs, right? And, and when you hit a home run and you knock it out the park like we did a couple weeks ago with Chipotle, when Chipotle ripped on earnings, we were playing with house money. Whether we won or, or lost that trade, it didn't really matter because everybody was up, right? But guess what? The thing ripped and went over 100 points overnight and made a lot of people a lot of money because we were playing it the right way. So when you understand you know, how to drive this Ferrari that we're going to show you how to drive, it's going to do a lot of things for you. But just be careful. Make sure you do what we tell you to do and definitely put that seatbelt on. So we're going to get into um, the intro to options and the what I like to call the anatomy of an option. So these are the things that you need to understand about options um, and about the, 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 how they're built to, to understand what to buy and why you're buying it, right? Um, when you're looking at the anatomy of an option, uh, think about it as these are the main parts that you need um, to understand exactly what you're looking at. If you, if you don't do this, it's literally like, what, why are we even here, right? So obviously an option gives you the right but not the obligation to leverage 100 shares of a given stock um, and to, to better have them for expiration, right? Uh, what that simply means is when you get into options trading, I like to explain like wholesaling real estate, right? Think about it as, you know, you have, um, you know, op, you know a, uh, house A over here, for example, is worth $300,000. You as a real estate, a wholesale real estate investor, you'll go to this person because they're in some type of distress and you'll say, well, I know your house is worth 300, however, I know you really need to get rid of it, and you know I really love to take it off your hands. However, the, the most I can give you right now is two hundred and seventy thousand. Right? Most people that are in distress and they need to get rid of their home um, would probably sell it to you for two seventy, knowing that it's worth three hundred, and say, "Hey, take it off my hands." You know, I figure the rest out. Or they may even already, you know, own most of their home. So where if you get them two seventy, they're they're still even breaking even or making money. Right? What you do is you say, I don't really want this. I don't want to fix it up. I don't I don't actually want to invest in the property for, you know, long term. You find somebody like myself or another real estate investor that says, you know, hey, I'll take, you know, you have a house for sale. Uh, it's worth 300. I can if I flip it and I, I, I uh, you know, do some renovations to it, I may be to get 310. Uh, I'll take it from you for 285. Well, guess what just happened? You just made the difference in the, the sale that you just bought the house from 270 and you sold it to me for 285. And you didn't even have to do anything in the middle. You made that 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 difference, right? Well, think about options the same way, right? With options, you get into an options contract with the intention of it going up after you purchase it. Once it goes up in value, you sell it back to the market or you sell it back to investors, and those investors take them and do what the heck they want to do with them. You don't really care after that point. All you care about is the, is making the money and what you want to make in the middle. And the way you do that is by you know investing the right way. What I mean by that is if you believe a stock is going to go up, we're buying call options. And if you believe the stock is going to go down, we're buying put options, right? Obviously, there's some other factors that go in and they're involved in that process. However, that is the main two ways of, you know, buying options, which is we're buying calls or we're buying puts. We believe it's going up for calls. We believe it's going down for puts. Um, we're going to talk about bid price. So a bid is the, the, the price that buyers are willing to pay at the time 
the ask price is the price that sellers want for their option contracts they hold. Um, they also have what's called a mid, which is obviously in the middle, and that's normally what your brokerage is going to try to get you guys to meet on to make that transaction happen. Um, we also have what we call in the money. So in the money is if you're looking at an option contract um, or strike price that has already um, been passed by the stock point uh, stock price. So what that means, if you're looking at Apple and it's $130 a share right now, and the strike price you're looking at is 125 that strike price is already in the money, right? Um, a lot of people love to buy in the money options because they believe, oh, nothing can go wrong. That is not really true, right? Don't just buy in the money options because you believe, oh, I'm guaranteed to make money. Um, in the money options are also normally a lot more expensive than buying at the money or outside the money. Um, there's nothing wrong, completely wrong with buying in the money. I just won't say, you know, don't buy too far into the money, right? The same thing with out the money. A lot of people love to buy out the money contracts because they're very cheap. Well, they're very cheap for a reason because the stock price has to get you know close to that that number by that certain date, or you're going to lose your money, right? So don't don't go out there and say, oh well, man, I found this one for ten dollars, and you know uh, it's uh, ninety points away from from where you know the stock is at the time. That's probably a bad buy, right? But buying out the money is not always bad. If you can buy out the money and you understand what you're doing, you have time to expiration. Time to expiration is very important. So normally I tell. Um, our new students, our new members that, you know, you shouldn't be buying any option contracts that don't have at least four weeks to expiration until you understand the whole game. And the reason why is that gives you plenty of time to, um, you know, find out if you made the right decision, right? Whereas, you know, some people, they, they buy just weeklies or they, some people even buy zero days right out the gate. And doing that, you can get burned, right? Out of the goal of what we're talking about and the goal of what I'm trying to teach you is to, you, you should never get burned with listen to what I teach and what you know we teach here in the Option Sniper Trading Academy. The goal is for ne never for you to to get burned um, when you don't know what you're doing. You know, do we trade weeklies and do we trade zero day? We, yep, we sure do because you can make a lot of money doing it. However, you do that once you understand the basics and what we're teaching, right? Um, so when you're buying out the money, you should only be buying out the money when you really understand what's going on um, and you have time to expiration. If you are buying out the money and <laughs> of on a weekly. And you're 90 points away, you're not going to make any money. You might make a dollar or two, but you're probably going to lose your money. So make sure you're paying attention with your with what you're purchasing and that you're looking at in the money, out the money, or as we call it, at the money, which is right near where the, the current stock price is. Um, that's what your strike price that you're purchasing is going to be. So I normally say that at the money is either obviously right you know, on that number. So if Apple, again, is at 130, they have a 130 strike. That's at the money. But also at the money can be you know 131 or 129, right? Um, in the money would be from 130 would be 128, 127, 126, 125, all the way down, right? Those 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 contracts have already that strike price has already been passed by the current stock price, so they are in the money. Out the money would be from 130 example would be 131, 132, 133, 134, 135, because the stock price has yet to come at that point, which is now is considered out of the money. So just know those terms when you're looking at to it. If you're looking um, inside of our group chat, or you hear us talking on our live calls and we say, you know, uh, this is a great stock to get uh, or this is a great contracts to, to be looking for out, out the money or this is great to be getting in the money on. That's what we're talking about. So some more key terms. Um, these are very, very, very important. So like I said, don't be shy. Pause it. Write them down. Um, you can, you know, you can look them up even further than what I'm telling you about today, but these are the things that you need to understand when you're looking to purchase an options contract, because if you aren't looking at these at minimum, you, you're, you're, you're doing it wrong, right? So we need to, we need to understand what open interest is and open interest, um, is the open interest, um, for what's going on for that, that, that strike price at the time. What that means is how many people are currently holding this contract in their portfolio. That's what open interest is. You can read the real definition. You can look it up if you want to. But like, again, wouldn't be made easy if we did all that. Open interest is the amount of uh, of that strike price, that option contract that is out in the market at the time, right? Um, those don't reset. They they build up every day. Um, we, we, what we also like to look at right next to open interest is the trading volume. So the volume. Volume is how many times that option contract has been traded that day. And the reason why these two things are important is just like with things in life. You don't want something nobody else wants for obvious reasons, right? Um, for while we're talking about with options, it's easier to get in and get out of these trades, which then we can go into liquidity um, when we're talking about these two. 
it's easier to get in and out of those, that, that trade with that option contract with that strike price if you understand the open interest and the volume behind it. Volume is something that's going to reset every day. So when you're looking at it and it starts off at 9.30 a.m. at zero, don't be like, well, Mike said, well, that's because it reset. But, you know, as you're going throughout the day and you see, you know, wow, this one has a large trading volume compared to the next strike price or this strike price. Um, it's because, you know, people believe the stock can actually get to that point. Um, and that's why they're trading it. Open interest, like I said, is the amount of open contracts out in the market at that given time. Um, implied volatility is, is implied volatility is very important. Um, it gives you a forecast of the movement of that contract, right? And the reason why that's important is, you know, in options, we need volatility to make money. You know, if something is not volatile at all, you're not going to make any money. But if something is super volatile, you, you got to understand how to trade that because it can lose money just as quick as it can make money. So things like Tesla, for example, are very volatile where they can go up $25, $30 in the course of five minutes and go down 40 in the same time frame, right? So you want to make sure that when you're looking into getting into just beginning to trade options, that you're not finding something that's super volatile, that you find something that has a little volatility that you can make some money with, but not crazy, right? Um, strike price, again, I've been saying it, but if you don't know what I'm talking about with the strike price, the strike price is the price that we believe the stock can get to by a certain date, right? With options, you have expiration days, right? The expiration days are normally every Friday um, of the of the market or of the week or whatever. And they go out from, you know, the Friday that you're currently trading all the way to two to three years from now. Um, however, the strike price is the price that we believe that that options contract or that, that um, stock, I should say, will get to by the certain expiration date. Um, that's all that is. Averaging down, averaging down is when you buy more of a stock or you buy more options to um, combat the losses or the, the the percentage that you're down at the time. You would average down and say, okay, I bought here at this point. It took a little dip when I bought it. Let me buy a little bit more to average my price down. So the price that I paid for it will come down because it's cheaper now. So when I buy it, I didn't buy it at $5 anymore. Now I bought it at $4.50. You know, that's how you can average down. And when you do that, when the stock does do what you believe it was going to do as far as go up um, in price, now, you know, you can still see some of the same profits because you average down in the middle of that trade. Um, you definitely want to be looking at, you know, your your premium pr and your price, obvious for obvious reasons, because you don't want to buy something that you can't afford. Um, two, price and premium really give their, their, their key indicators on what's going on. Um, and we're going to get into that a little bit later on why you should be identifying premium and price. But premium price of an option contract, especially when you understand the different shares, I mean, the different stocks that you're going to be trading. You can be like, wow, um, I know that, you know, the way Roku moves or I know the way that Apple moves. And this is really too cheap. This, this, this price right here is too cheap for this price point and at this strike. Man, this is going to make me some money. You're going to understand that, you know, as we go further into what we're teaching here. But that's why it's very important to understand and very important to look at, you know, your premium price when you're trading. So in recap, when you're looking to buy an options contract, these are the main things that you should be comparing to each strike price to make sure that, you know, this is the, the right option contract for you. So you need to be comparing the open interest, the volume, the implied volatility, the bid and the ask and the, the bid and ask spread. The reason why that is important is if you buy, if the bid and ask spread is something that's so wide and you get caught, you know, at the bottom of it, um, or I should say at the top of it, you're going to walk into things down. You know what I mean? Like you just paid the ask price for something to where the bid was, you know, 30 cent and you paid 90 cent because that was the ask. Now you're, you're already in the hole and you have to wait for that option contract to increase in value before you can even just make your money back. So you need to definitely be looking at the bid and ask spread. And all that is, is the difference between what the bid is and what the ask is. If it's something that's so wide, you know, that it doesn't even make sense, stay away from that strike price. Um, you want to be looking at bid and ask spreads that are pretty tight for the most part. And that's because if you get into it and you have to get in a little bit higher than the bid, you 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 won't be down you know crazy just getting into the daggone trade. So um, again, make sure you're paying attention to open interest and volume. Make sure you're paying attention to the the bid and ask spread. Definitely need some type of volatility. However, not a whole lot of it. Um, we want to be looking at our premium price, um, especially once you learn different stocks and and understanding their their normal premium prices for for where they are in or out the money, and also looking for liquidity. Um, liquidity it, it just lets you get in it and get out of trades. A lot faster because a lot of people want it um, and you can take your money and run so all these things need to be thought of before you are 
pulling the trigger and hitting the buy button when you're getting into options. All right, so now we're going to talk about some brokerage accounts, right? So here at Option Snipers, our favorite brokerage account um, to use is TD Ameritrade um, or Thinkorswim, right? Thinkorswim is the product of TD Ameritrade. They have a beautiful desktop version, and they also have a mobile version that can, you can get on your iPad or iPhone. Um, let's think about, well, I'll get to that in a second. So TD Ameritrade is a very good one. Uh, Fidelity is also a very good one uh, with their Active Trader Pro. Uh, once you get into the advanced levels of options trading, using TD Ameritrade, um, Thinkorswim, or Fidelity's Active Trader Pro is going to be something that I highly recommend. Um, Webull is a very good um, middle of the, the, the line or starter um, brokerage account to use. And the reason why, it, it breaks things down. It gives you, you know, things to look at with news and financials and uh, beautiful charts um, that you can look at on your mobile device or on your desktop computer as well. Um, E-Trade is another one that a lot of people use. And then we have Robin Hood, right? So I don't know how much I can say legally uh, about Robin Hood, but put it this way. I would never um, let my grandmother trade there, for, and I'll leave it at that. And you can you can take that how you want. But if you're going to be trading options, you know, um, full time, you're going to be, you know, what we like to call day trading. Robin Hood is definitely not the spot for you um, for multiple reasons. But pro primarily because of the, the options that it gives you as far as looking at charts and, you know, price action and time and different things that are very, very important when we're trading options. So Robinhood could be great for long term investing. You know, you buy something, you can buy it and hold it forever. They have fractional shares on there. So if you don't have enough money to buy, let's say, Amazon, for example, but you want to get into Amazon, you can buy fractional shares with with, um, you know, Robinhood. So that's cool. However, if we're trading options and we're doing it professionally like we do over here. Uh, again, I wouldn't even let my grandmother get on there. So definitely, um, you know, be careful when you're doing uh, when you're picking your brokerage app because it's very important. Now, getting back to what I was going to say about TD earlier, and let's let's I like to use a lot of examples to break things down for people. Um, let's say you were going to be talking about different types of cars, right? Robinhood, in my opinion, is 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 like a new Honda Accord, which is a very nice car. They, especially with the new ones, it's pretty, has all the buttons and it looks cool and everything, you know, but it's still a Honda, right? TD Ameritrade is a Ferrari or Rolls Royce. It is the top of the line luxury of what it, what what's going on in the car world. Um, has all the bells and whistles, has all the buttons you can press, got the star line, headliner, you know, uh, moon roof on, on certain vehicles, you know, uh, big wheel base has, you know, silencing for your road when you're hitting bumps things like that that's why you buy rolls royce you don't buy a rolls royce just because it costs four hundred thousand dollars you buy a rolls royce because of what you get for four hundred thousand dollars right well you're getting a td ameritrade because of what you get when you get on td ameritrade you know that the ability to be able to customize your entire um setup that you have on your computer or your charts when you're on your mobile device or the advanced order types that you can put in on td ameritrade compared to places like robin hood is why you get on td ameritrade and that's why we suggest it because, you know, like I said, what we're doing here, we're not playing around. We are, we are, you know, getting into this game to be very successful. And if you want to be very successful, you need to better have all your tools at your hand and at your disposal when you get ready. And if you want to have a, a brokerage account that can do that, um, TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim is it. Um, you're probably like, damn, is Mike getting paid to talk about them? No, actually, I wish I was because uh, I just say, I just sold them up very well. However, they ain't giving me no money. Um, I just, you know, I, I, like I said, I, my, my, my goal is to give you the, the best of what's going on and to get you started on the right foot. And if you get started on TD Ameritrade and you take everything that we, we actually have as you get deeper into this course, we have different um, videos that we show how to break down the mobile app, for example. We give you a, literally a whole entire hour on how to use the mobile app and how to use every feature on the mobile app. We also have multiple classes on how to use Thinkorswim's desktop version and their Active Trader. So um, the reason why we talk about TD again, and I'm going to get off of it in a second, but the reason why we talk about it is it gives you everything that you need to be able to do within trading options. So if you had everything at your disposal, why would you not use this platform? You know, Robinhood is cool because it looks cute and, and it and it and it is a great place to to get news and to you know buy fractional shares. But if we're talking about being a full time trader, we're talking about, you know, really making five figures a month like we like we talk about in the challenge that we have coming up and as we talk about in our course td ameritrade is a platform you should be looking to get onto. um i'm not saying it's the the end all be all however 
it is the top of the line, it's the top of the food chain when it comes to brokerage accounts. So uh, with that being said, when we talk about brokerage accounts, when you're setting up your new account, um, a lot of people, when I, when I talk to them, they're like, well, Mike, you know, I would love to trade you guys, but I don't have $25,000 in my account, so I can't day trade. Well, you've been misinformed, right? So some people tell you, and that's because a lot of people on Robinhood, but some people tell you that you need $25,000 in your account to be able to day trade. That is absolutely incorrect, right? Um, when you're on a place like Robinhood, they give you a margin account from Jump. So what you need to understand about different account types is you have two accounts. You have a margin account and you have a cash account. In a margin account, you're absolutely correct. You need $25,000 in your margin account daily balance to be able to day trade. However, if you have a cash account, which apps like Webull and TD Ameritrade allow you to have, um, you can actually day trade and trade at your leisure, at your leisure with account balance that is less than $25,000, right? Or even if you, you just want to have a cash account and it has more than $25,000, you can do the same thing. But the difference between the two is when you have a, a margin account and you have less than $25,000, you're held to the day trading rule, which is you can only make three day trades in a five day trading period. Um, when you have a cash account, you're allowed to trade your cash on hand throughout the day and it resets every day. So for example, if you have $2,000 in your account, you can trade that whole entire 2000 over multiple trades of that day until you use it up. Once you use it up, whether you make money or lose money, you can't touch it again until tomorrow. So if you made money and you say you turned your 2000 into 2500, you know, now you have 2500, but you have to use it tomorrow because you use the whole 2000. Now, with that being said, you're like, wow, you trade your whole, no, you never trade your whole account any. You should never be trading more than 15 to 20% of your portfolio at any given time. Um, but what, I, what I'm, I'm just breaking down the difference between a cash account and a margin account and the difference in why you should be able to join somebody like TD Ameritrade and still be able to day trade if you don't have twenty five thousand in your account. Um, so don't get stuck that thinking that you have to have twenty five thousand. If you have a cash account on any brokerage app that you're using, um, you can day trade without having twenty five thousand. Um, this screen just breaks it down again. So if you want to pause it and take a look and read it, um, it just breaks down the difference between cash and margin, but. Um, again, cash account, you can trade the cash on hand throughout the day, then the next day it resets. On a margin account, um, you have to have at least $25,000 of your, your account to be able to day trade. So now we're going to get into um, the different types of trading. I call it the trading floor, right? So the beautiful thing, again, um, they're not paying me, but the beautiful thing about TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim is they actually have a side of their app called paper trading. Um, and people that are familiar with Forex and people that are familiar with other different trading uh, markets, they new, normally call it demo trading. But over here in, on TD Ameritrade, it's called paper trading, right? So what paper trading allows you to do is it allows you to um, see exactly what's going on in the real market, um, have real market conditions. However, it's with fake money. So you can't win. You can't lose. All you can do is learn. But the reason why that's very important to somebody that's watching this right now, somebody that's just getting into the stock market, somebody that's just getting into options trading is you want to learn as much as possible before you actually risk your real money, right? So if you're watching this course and you're watching our, our, our entire um, program, while you're doing that, you need to be paper trading. You need to be testing the strategy in which we're teaching you and showing you that, that you can be successful using. You need to be paper trading while you're doing so. And if you're doing that, I'm telling you, when you get out and you get into the real market, you're going to get off on a, on a fast start and you're going to have a better opportunity to make money than if you just jump into the live market right away and start risking real money. Why would you do that when you have an opportunity to paper trade? Even as advanced, an, a, a, an advanced trader and a professional trader and myself, I still paper trade. And the reason why is, you know, it, it also teaches discipline. So if I get into a trade, I make the money that I'm looking to make for today, you know, I'll close my, my real live account and I'll open up the paper trading side and say, okay, well, if I was going to take this other trade, let's see how it would have worked out based upon these factors. Uh, paper trading is, is, is basically sharpening your tools, man. It's, it's just like practice. So if you've played sports before, um, if you played an instrument, you understand practice makes perfect, right? And if you're not practicing every day, if you're not practicing what you're doing, you're not going to be good at it, right? So if you're trying to get into the real stock market, you're trying to get into um, options trading, paper trading is the way to go when you first get started. I, I tell people when I talk to them that you should be at least doing 50 paper trades before you jump into the real market. If you're not and somebody that somebody else is advising you to do otherwise, they're crazy. You should hang up on them. You should, you know, <laughs> turn away because they're just... They're just trying to show you that you can make money, yeah, but if you don't understand how to make the money, you're going to get burned. So paper trading, 
is the way to go. Um, I love it. I teach everybody that I teach options that I teach them to paper trade from the beginning. Some people even get annoyed like Mike, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm making so much money paper trading, I'm ready to go live. Well, have you done your 50 paper trades yet? Well, if you haven't, then keep paper trading because the stock market is not going anywhere. You know what I mean? Uh, I love when people, you know, hit me up like, damn, man, I missed that one. That thing ripped. Oh my God, I, it's so much money left on the table. You know how many times I hear that? I hear that literally once or twice a week. And the reason why is because there's always an opportunity to make money in the stock market. If you are, are worried about one trade that you missed, this is not the right thing for you because the stock market has been around forever. You know what I mean? A lot of people uh, thought, you know, when Corona hit that the world was going to end and the stock market was crashing. Oh my God, is, is it? Well, guess what? That's not the first time we've had a pandemic. That's not the first time or the last time that we will. Um, so what I'm getting at is, you don't miss an opportunity just because you missed one trade that went well. You know what I mean? If you still have your account, you didn't get clapped, as we call it. You know what I mean? Like, listen, trading and not knowing what you're doing is exactly how you get clapped. And you look up and you're like, damn, I had a $10,000 account and now I have 500 because I wasn't listening to what I was supposed to be doing um, when they were telling me these things. So, um, again, paper trading is the, the best way to get started in the market. It's also the best way to practice your skills, the best way to practice the strategies in which we teach. Um, the best way to implement the bots and everything that we use inside our community, paper trade them first, understand how they work, learn how to press the buttons, learn how to drive the car, and then get on the real road and go for it, right? Um, inside of actual trading, there's three different trading types, right? So we have scalping, which is basically you buy something and you sell it within, I would say, an hour, right? So scalping is a, a quick sell, a quick buy and a quick sell, You're looking to make a, 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 a certain amount of time. I mean, a certain amount of money in a short, a short amount of time, get in, get out, that's scalping, right? Day trading. Day trading is exactly what it sounds like. You buy something at open and you sell it before close in a single trading session. That is a day trade. Um, when you're looking on things like TD Ameritrade versus uh, Robinhood again, when you find out, okay, why is it saying my account is frozen for the next 90 days? Well, that's because you violated Robinhood's uh, policy and, and the SEC's policy on day trading. Um, you've, you've conducted three three day trades in a, a five day trading period or more than three day trades in a five day day trading period with a margin account and you have less than 25,000. So um, if you don't want to run into those issues, make sure you have a cash account and uh, day trade again is buying at open, selling before close a day trade. A swing trade is anything longer than a day, right? So if you buy something today and you sell it on Friday, that is a swing trade. If you buy something today and you sell it in 2022, that is also a swing trade, or some people call them leaps. But a swing trade is anything that you're holding and you plan on swinging into the next day or further out. Um, those are three different types of trading. Uh, learn them. Learn who, what you're best at and what your, your um, availability, your time, your skill level allows you to do. Um, again, we teach you how to do all three. And I would say that if, you, if you're able to master them and you understand, okay, I'm really good at scalping this stock. I'm really good at swinging this stock. That's how I make my money. That's perfectly fine with me. So just understand them, um, test them out again through paper trading and, and go from there. So uh, there's different market, um, there's different order types when you're getting into buying and selling. Um, some of the, the, the simple and the basic ones that we're going to talk about today, uh, a market order. So a market order, think about it like uh, here, here goes Mike again to describing food. But think about going to a nice restaurant and, you know, you're taking your significant other out. And you say, get whatever you want, baby. And they look down and like, wow, I really want that Japanese A5 Wagyu at market price. Whoa, hold on. Market price means that when they bring that steak back to the table with that bill, it could have been whatever the heck they wanted to be that day, um, which could be crazy, right? Think about that when you're buying um, stocks and options. So if you buy something at market, you yes, you might be looking at the stock that was $130 um, at the time. But let's say that it's on a, a crazy uptrend. The thing is ripping. And you're just trying to get in. You buy that market. Well, you could have bought it for 145 now, you know what I mean? Something crazy like that. Or options contract. You're looking to get into it at $2, and by the time you hit buy a market, you bought it for $2.30. So now, you you know, $30 more than you wanted to pay for it. Um, so definitely make sure you're paying attention to what you're doing with market orders. The only time I suggest using a market order is when you're scalping and you're looking for something to, to go in the uptrend with the strategies in which we're teaching. Sometimes it's not a bad thing to buy at market. But when you're looking to swing or you're looking to um, even day trade, but for a longer time period, uh, market is probably not the best thing for you. You should be looking to do what's called a limit order. So a limit order is 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 basically what it sounds like. The limit you're willing to buy to buy something or sell something at at that given time, right? So if I say I'm not paying no more than two hundred dollars for this thing, 
So two dollars on the contract. I'll put my limit at two dollars. That's it. That's all I want to pay. That'll be it. You won't get charged no more. However, the cool thing is you can actually pay less. So let's say that you put two dollars as your limit. However, the thing sells for you know one ninety seven. You can get it for a little bit cheaper, but you'll never pay two ten, right? So that's what a limit order is. Um, a stop or stop order is if you're into a trade already, you've already purchased an option contract or you purchase shares already, and you're looking to set a, a point that if the if the stock or the option contract gets to this price, I want to automatically be taken out. That is what a stop order is, or a stop loss, as people call it. So I set my stop loss and say, okay, I'm not willing to lose more than this money right here. Let me put that in. It's guaranteed to kick you out um, at that or around that price, so you don't lose more money than you're willing to lose at the time. Um, there's some apps out there that I won't mention the name again. However, if you set a stop loss on certain platforms, sometimes they magically skip them and you could be in a world of hurt. So make sure you're using a really good brokerage account and a really good brokerage app that respects your stop and gets you out of that trade uh, when you're looking to get out. Um, stop limit is the same thing, but verse, but, uh, but is in the reverse. Meaning if you're like, Mike, I don't have time to sit in front of my computer all day and trade with you guys or you know I, I want a day trade but I don't I don't I don't have the time to do it uh, because I have to go to work right now you can you can set limits right so a limit is a stop limit lets you know that when the stock or the price of my option contract gets to a certain point in profit I want you to automatically sell this for me take my profit and put that money into my account um, that is what a stop limit does for you um, we also do these things that I love called trailing stops right so trailing stops is, is kind of the same thing as well um, however, think about it like a like a yo-yo or a rope. So you know a yo-yo and rope only have a certain length that they have to them, and when you pull it to its full length, you know you you it it can pop right and it gets you out. So think about it a trailing stop as that. So let's say you get into a trade, um, the trade is going well. You know you're up, you made your 15, 20, 30, 40 percent whatever you're looking to make that day, and you're like ah, I want to go do something else. You can actually set a trail stop to say that okay, if the option contract right now is at three dollars um if it if it loses more than 20 you know twenty dollars off of the 300 i wanted to automatically sell but really what you're saying is anytime that this contract loses more than twenty dollars from the high i want you to automatically get me out of it so instead of you having a hard stop let's say the option contract goes from three dollars to six dollars you'll stay in that trade the whole entire time as long as it never loses more than twenty dollars the whole entire time so the cool thing about trailing stops is that you know you can set it and forget it walk away once you're in profit and say you know, as Josh likes to say, my trail stop is activated. What he means by that is he's made the money that he's looking to make for the day. He set a trail stop to say that no matter what, if anything happens and it goes more than $10 down, I want to get taken out of this thing and put my profit in my bank account. So that that is a beautiful thing to learn how to use. We teach you how to use them over here. We teach you how to put different um, advanced order types in. But the trailing stop is something that um, you really could take advantage of if you can't sit in front of your computer on a day to day basis, you know, hour after hour. So now we're going to talk about catalysts, right? So these are things that are going to drive your, your stock price. They're going to drive your um, your options contract. These are what get things going, you know, either direction, up or down. Um, and, and it's really giving you the reason behind why something is moving, right? So this is going to be a catalyst. So, um, the, for example, you know, companies' earnings, like I was telling you earlier, um, being a new product being launched, um, you know, political news, anything coming out, Corona's coming back, the Delta variants, things like that. That is what could cause a stock to go up and go down, option contracts to go up and go down as well. Um, upgrades or downgrades. What that means is when analysts come out and say, oh, man, we really love um, how AMD or NVIDIA is moving, um, especially with the chip shortage. They're going to be doing X, Y, and Z and, and getting these um, bills that were just signed by President Biden, blah, 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 right? So because those things are going on, you know, different analysts will upgrade or downgrade a, um, a stock. And normally when that happens, the stock price can move. And just like that, the option contracts will move as well. Um, you know, management and transitions and things like that. So like when a company loses a CEO or gains a CEO, uh, when different people from, you know, the, the CFO from Apple comes over to become the CFO from Microsoft, that would be huge, right? If something crazy like that happened and that would cause the stock price to go up and go down. Um, and different dividend announcements. Um, we didn't go over in the beginning, but dividends is, is when you own a stock and you own um, stocks that pay back dividends, they give you money back for owning their shares, right? And um, different announcements that come out that say, okay, we're going to be giving you more money in your dividends or we're going to give you less money in dividends could also have an impact, uh, impact on what's going on. It could be a catalyst to make a stock go up and go down. 
So here's some of the resources that we suggest you use uh, when you're just getting into the market, you just get into options trading. One of my favorite is the option profit calculator. Um, if you go there and you, you can literally put in um, what you're trying to do and what you're looking to make and it, it'll tell you, okay, if you bought this option contract here for this expiration date, it, if it goes to this dollar amount, the stock goes to this dollar amount, this is how much money you can make. Or if it goes to this dollar amount, this is how much money you potentially lose. So literally it takes the guessing out of the game for you to know exactly what number you need to get to, to make your goal for the day or to hit your stop loss. So you already know what you're looking at when you get into that trade. Um, Investopedia is one of my favorite things to look at um, when I first got started. I still look at it to this day to get to break down different terms and definitions. But if you're looking to really break down something and want to know what something means, all you got to do is take, type it in on Investopedia or even go to Google and say, you know, RSI and type Investopedia behind it. And it'll take you there. It'll break down what RSI means. It'll give you a three page definition on it on just about anything in the stock market. Um, market Watch is a really good. Um, site to get great news for your um the stock market and what's going on in the options world um seeking alpha finviz finviz is really cool because on their news section when you go there it literally draws news articles from all the major outlets and puts them in one place for you so you don't have to go search the internet for them so if you are really into news which you should be when you get into the stock market if you go to finviz and go to the news section it would literally break down um, all of the breaking news by, you know, Wall Street Journal, Motley Fool, everything uh, comes straight to their, their site. They pull it and they put it there for you. Um, CNNMoney.com, uh, we didn't go over here, but they have a um, thing they call the Fear and Greed Index. And the Fear and Greed Index basically lets you know the, the overall temperature of the market at the time, right? When we have extreme fear in the market, that's a really good time to be buying long term, to be investing, you know. And when we have extreme greed, that's a really good time to be looking, hmm, should I be taking my profits from these, be holding the money, putting it aside, waiting for it to drop so I can buy more. So definitely um, look into that, check it out, learn it, love it. Um, the Wall Street Journal is what WJS stands for. Obviously, everybody knows about Wall Street Journal. And Yahoo Finance. Yahoo Finance is a really good source as well to use to look at financials for a stock to be able to break it down and, and find out really um, what's going on with that company. So those are some of the resources that I like to suggest for new beginners. Um, and people that just get into the game, make sure you take that. Um, like I said earlier, if you're still with me right now, you know, and you haven't joined our community yet, you haven't joined Option Snipers, we're actually doing a, a five figure challenge, what we call it. Is, and what it's going to be is over the next five days, we're going to teach you exactly how we teach our students to make five figures a month. Um, I want you guys to take advantage. If you have the time to sit down and, and spend with me and my guys, we're going to go down and break down everything that we use to get into the stock market in our challenge. And we're going to be challenging people to join this challenge to make five figures a month trading stock options with us. So um, somewhere in this video, at some point, you're going to see a link for that. I want you to click it and join the challenge. We even have VIP sessions. We can meet and greet with me, myself, the guys, and some of our guest speakers. And we're going to even you know, do some, some real good challenge uh, strategy sessions with that VIP group. So Go ahead and, and take advantage of that. If you're just getting into the stock market, you're just getting into options, or you've been looking at option snipers and you're like, man, I really want to join these guys. And you know, you're, you're joining right around the time they were running the challenge. I guarantee that that thing will change your life and it will show you exactly what you need to do to be successful trading options. So um, make sure you check us out on all of our major platforms, you know, um, Instagram, Twitter, our website. Um, we, we really post a lot of great information on YouTube as well with our videos. We actually post our weekly calls that we do on Sundays, our watch list calls um, on that as well. So you can look at that. Bailey has some really good videos um, that he's breaking down, some strategies which we use. So check us out on all the major social media platforms. Again, Instagram, Twitter, our website, and YouTube. And man, listen, enjoy the content that we're giving out. We love feedback, good, bad, indifferent. Um, hit me up in my DMs. Hit me up on, on the Option Snipers uh, Instagram as well if you have any questions or you want us to touch on the subject. And we would love to take care of you guys. So, again, my name is Mike here with Option Snipers. Um, join that five-day challenge to learn how to make five figures a month. And, hey, guys, I'll see you on the winning side.